What's up, Tall Tannic? It's Boy Badger up in this house. I'm finna kick it. <laughs> hey, it's Board Badger, as presented by the lower thirds in the rest of this video. Let's get on with the video. <laughs> There are some incredible festivals and celebrations held all over the world that most of us don't even know about. From drinking beer to pelting thousands with tomatoes, I'm here to walk you through all of the fun, the messy, the beautiful looking celebrations that our planet has to offer. Join me as I take you through amazing celebrations around the world. Burning Man Obviously this festival was going to make the list, right? Burning Man, an artistic, fun, free celebration where thousands upon thousands of people come together to create art, lose themselves, and a lot of times, find themselves too. The event takes place in the Black Rock Desert in Nevada and is temporary, lasting only eight days between the last Sunday in August and the first Monday in September. It's set up and put on by a non-profit organization called The Burning Man Project, and draws people by the tens of thousands in attendance just seems to keep on swelling. What started with literally just 20 participants in 1986 has now grown to 67,290 in 2016. Incredible. Attendees express themselves in all sorts of ways, but one of the most well-known is the giant works of art that are created and then burned at the conclusion of the festival, hence where Burning Man draws its name, as the masterpieces are burned to the ground to try and leave as little a trace as possible. And hopes are that no one would be able to tell that humans had occupied the area recently. Shoot. We gotta go. See y'all in August. Harbin Ice and Snow Festival. Who doesn't want to visit a real life winter wonderland? The Harbin Ice and Snow Festival is basically just that, a winter wonderland. And you can visit sometime between December and March each year. It has quickly become the largest snow and ice festival in the world and has grown past just Chinese participants. Sculptors and visitors flock from all over the globe to compete in making the most intricate, beautiful, and gigantic ice sculptures anyone has ever seen. Technically, the festival actually begins on January 5th, but in all reality, it starts whenever the heck the Chinese want and ends the same way. For example, in 2014, the festival was held on December 20th, 2013 to February 2014. In 2015, it ran from December 22, 2014 to early March 2015. To put it all together without all those numbers, there's no real start and end dates. Just show up and you'll probably be able to see some cool stuff. Dia de los Muertos this year holiday is celebrated throughout Mexico and is even incorporated in other countries and cultures as well. Dia de los Muertos is a day for celebration, for reflection, for happiness and sadness alike. The dead are prayed for and remembered and the living pay homage to the fallen with offerings and altars, sugar skulls, marigolds, and various foods and drinks. They visit gravesites and party for their loved ones, whom I'm sure wouldn't want anything else. Who wants their loved ones to be so sad when they die? I want mine to miss me, but to celebrate the heck out of me and live on for me. Dia de los Muertos sounds like a deadly good time. Chinese New Year. Do you know what China's most significant day of the year is? Ah, don't worry, I didn't know either until I looked it up. It's the Chinese New Year, which is held on the new moon anytime between January 1st and February 20th. In 2018, it fell on February 16th and rung in the year of the dog. The new year is celebrated magnificently with lanterns, flowers, dragons, fireworks, and partygoers and performers alike wear symbolic clothing and various costumes. The party doesn't last just one day either. No, it lasts from whatever day the new moon happens to fall on all the way through to the lantern festival on the 15th day of the first month, which makes the festival and celebrations the longest in the Chinese calendar. Looks like one heck of a party. Boryong Mud Festival. What happens when a company can't afford to pay for commercials to advertise their product? Well, they create a festival and invite a whole bunch of people to come out and play in the mud. That's what happened when a cosmetics company in South Korea came up with a line of products that featured muds from the Boryong Mud Flats as the number one ingredient in their formulation. Potential customers, and probably lots of others that just wanted to party, go to feel the various benefits of the mud and to hang out amongst a bunch of others who are uh, covered in mud. There are mud pools, a mud prison, mud slides, and mud skiing at the festival, as well as acupuncture, live music, and supposedly fantastic fireworks display. Sounds good to me. A little mud never hurt anybody. Running of the Bulls. Perhaps you've heard of this festival. Perhaps you've heard of this festival. It's real famous and has been featured in commercials and in movies alike over the years. So I'm going to assume that you have. The running of the bulls is actually only one part of the San Fermin festival, which takes place in a city called Pamplona in Navarre, Spain. 
The event involves, well, running in front of a group of bulls through sectioned off streets in the town and trying not to die. Typically, a dozen bulls are released and allowed to do their thing, with a few being let loose at a time. Around 200 to 300 people get hurt at the event every year, but it's usually not due to the bulls, but to dummies getting injured while falling. I'm sure some unlucky people have been gored and trampled as a mother in the past. I mean, how could they not? They're running in front of bulls. But it still sounds like a good old time. Do you have the guts to give it a go? Carnival of Venice. This fairy tale like festival takes place in Venice, Italy, and has been going on for over 900 years. Yeah, that's right. The same festival that takes place today has been taking place for nearly a millennium. Although I'm sure it differs these days from the past. Entertainers, jugglers, musicians, partygoers, and all other sorts fill the streets and colorful decorative boats line the canals as the party rages on with millions of people in attendance. Elaborate masks are seen everywhere throughout the carnival, and they are actually what has made it world famous. There are lots of different styles of masks worn, from plague doctors, the bizarre ones with a long beak, to the Volto, a white porcelain mask typically worn with a cloak. And at one time, the different masks correlated with different occupations. While the carnival sure looks like it could be a little creepy, it also seems fun. So I would give it a shot. Just gotta hope no one's got any evil intentions because they would quickly disappear into a crowd without a face, a uh, trace. La Tomatina. Who here likes tomatoes? Well then I might have found the festival that's just right for you. La Tomatina is a festival where tomatoes are the main attraction. I mean, look at the name. And participants get to ride down tomato streak slides and have tomato fights. How fun would it be to throw millions of tomatoes at thousands of people? It's like a giant snowball fight but with fruit instead of frozen water. The festival is held in Bunol, which is just 19 miles east of Spain and has been going on since 1945. It all started when an upset parade participant got angry and went on a rampage, which ended up with people grabbing tomatoes from a market stall and throwing them at each other. The idea spread when next year people brought their own tomatoes from home and began their own tomato fight, and that kind of settled things. Although the fight was banned for some years, the people spoke and brought it back, and La Tomatina was officially labeled a festival. How cool! Holly, Who wouldn't want to go to this colorful and mesmerizing event? This festival of colors is a Hindu spring festival celebrated in Southern Asia in the Indian subcontinent. Peeps meet up to celebrate the arrival of spring, the victory of good over evil. In other words, they hate the darn winter! They get together and leave the past in the past, work to repair broken relationships, laugh and play, and forgive and forget. The festival takes place the night after a Pramina, the Indian word for full moon, and runs through the following day, which is where the colors come into play. The celebrations on the evening following the full moon is called the Holika Dahan, and the vibrant color spraying celebration the next day is called Rangwali Holi, where painting people is kind of the goal. It's a free-for-all of colors, and people use balloons and squirt guns filled with color to create their human masterpieces. There's music, dancing, laughing, playing, food, drinks, and even some bang use, which is just the devil's lettuce infused in drinks. This festival sounds like the festival of all festivals, and I hope that one day, I'll be able to enjoy the colors, music, laughing, and da bang alongside my fellow winter haters. Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. All right, so you probably know that this festival takes place in New Mexico due to the title. But did you know that it takes place in October? All right, that's not that interesting. But what is, is that this event is the biggest hot air balloon festival in the United States and over 500 balloons are used in the participation of this high flying spectacle. This balloon fiesta lasts for nine days and it began in 1972 during a birthday celebration for radio station 770 KOB radio. What's crazy is that the board for this festival had to set a limit on the number of balloons that could participate for safety reasons. And at one point, in the year 2000, the number of balloons registered to fly was 1,019. The limit was set at 750 in 2001 and was dropped to 600 in 2009 because of city growth and loss of landing zones. Still, 600 balloons is a ton and it would be so amazing to be there, boots on the ground or in the air to watch these buttes take flight. I guess I'll go have to see these for myself someday. Oktoberfest. Who likes beer? Everyone? Okay, good. Except you little ones. You shouldn't be drinking beer. Oktoberfest is an annual big old party that takes place in Munich, Bavaria, Germany, and is the world's largest beer festival. It lasts for 16 to 18 days, from late September to the first week in October. And during those 16 to 18 days, it's all about the beer. 
One interesting fact about this festival is that only beers that are brewed within Munich city limits and conform to the Reinheitsgebot or, <laughs> or the German beer purity law can be served. More than 6 million people attend the event every year, and people come from all over the world to join in on this one-of-a-kind experience. This party is massive, and it's a significant part of Bavarian culture and has actually been held since 1810. Millions upon millions of liters of beer is served. And there are games, music, side stalls, and even amusement rides to be found throughout the festival. What more could one want? I want to have a birthday party like this. But my birthday is in September. Aw oh man, what am I doing sitting at work? I gotta get to planning my festival hopping trip. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And maybe you can trip with me. Whoa, video's over already? That was pretty fast. If you want to see more videos just like this one, stop them by Board Badger on the way out. I'll keep you entertained. See you there.